I'm just a little shiner named Goldie, just a swimming along. Look out for that crappie, man. Slurp. It's gone. Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a better outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dueler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com. And now here's Crappie Hippie at the bench. Hey everybody, it's Crappie Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas. And I am so excited to be with you here on YouTube today. I had a whole bunch of work to do for Glasswater in terms of creating a financial report. And I got sick of doing it and making these videos is part of my job too. So I said, you know what, it's high time I got back to making some videos and hanging out with the YouTube crowd. So here we go. We're going to make one of my favorite patterns today. It's called the Goldie. All right, to make a Goldie, you're going to need a gold jig head. And that's one of the first things you're going to need. Gold jig head. You can do that a number of ways. You can buy a jig head and paint it gold. And then there's a lot of different good gold paint. There's even gold powder coat that you can get. Um, you can also use a brass bead. Um, you can use uh, nail polish. You can use all kinds of stuff. But I am going to make a bead head, but I'm not going to use brass. Now let's start off with a hook I'm using is a Matsuo sickle hook number two. Uh, Matsuo America is out of business. There's still places you can get these. Uh, if you can't find any, don't despair because you can get these um, from um, Mustad. They call their sickle hook the skipjack. You can also get the little nasty from Eagle Claw. So there's plenty of sickle hooks out there. Uh, I still like Matsuo is the best. It has the lightest wire. It's the easiest one to uh, get out of a brush pile when you do get snagged. But they all have a super fine, quick set point on them um, for uh, you know penetrating that webby you know mouth on a crappie quick. And uh, I think they're just awesome. And we're gonna do that on a number two Matsuo sickle hook right now. And of course, first thing we want to do, put on the glasses so we can see the goggles of power. And we're going to get in here and we're going to lay down our bed of thread. And let's go down to that hook point. And let's go all the way back up. Let's get a nice little bed of thread going there, okay? Now you can put a hitch in here if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, you can hitch and coat, hitch and coat, and do what you want all the way along, but sometimes if you got to go back, it makes it a little difficult. Okay, so I've got right here is a um, 10 millimeter hematite gold plated bead. Hematite is a type of iron, and uh, this has got electroplate on it, so that's even better than paint because that's going to take a lot of wear to even start to come off. Um, this bead weighs 332nd ounce. Um, I can add a little more weight. I'm going to hold it on to the shaft with the nail, with a little 7 and 8, uh, number 18 nail. I think are these, yeah, a little seven, eight, um, 17 or 18 nail, I think 18 smallest, any way you can get. And I'm not going to have to trim it any, because as you can see, I have plenty of room here. Here's the hook point, here's the end of the nail. So I'm not going to need to trim this up uh, any in terms of the, the nail. Now I'm going to get that on that that bend as tight as I can, and you can see I'm going to kind of crisscross here down here. I'm going to crisscross this bead on here like so, and then I'm going to come down and I'm going to be going back, and you know let's make sure we're tugging tight because we don't want this thing rolling around us. Now when you get down here. Where the nail part is, you can either trim that off, but you want to actually lighten up on your wraps here for a minute, just so you can get that covered, because that's beveled, and that has a cutting edge, so it'll go through wood, and it will cut your thread, so don't get over aggressive on that. All right, and go down, and now I am going to give it a hitch around, just to 
keep her on there. Okay, there it is. Our jig head is made. Okay, so we got the jig head made. We got her made, made, made. And uh, we can get started. Okay, the supplies also for a Goldie, you're going to want to get um, some gold uh, embroidery thread or some tinsel thread um, in gold. And if you don't have that, you can use, oh, you can use, you know, uh, a crystal, golden crystal flash or a golden green or a chartreuse with some gold in it. Uh, you can use flashaboo. The, the chartreuse is pretty close, but you can find some flashaboo that tends toward gold. Any kind of a gold tinsely looking material will work on tying the goldie. Now, remember that we are tying, basically tying upside down. Um... So this is the top of the jig. It's going to swim, obviously, from the from the line tie here. It's going to swim the other way. But we're tying this way because it's a little easier on your hands. And um, it makes no difference uh, which side you start on. Okay, so here's, here's some boo. And this pack's not stellar, but it's not bad either. I like this one. Got some nice longer fibers on this one. We're going to pull that out of it's all here on a string it's what's called strung marabou and this is just out of a standard quarter ounce pack and I'm gonna grab a couple of them because uh, we might need more than one I don't think so I don't think so but I might decide I like this feather better than that feather or vice versa so anyway I would like get get me some boost set up and ready so that's the color chartreuse I like to use you can go lighter you can go darker uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with goldie you can make it really dark green which is kind of cool Excuse me, I'm dropping boo everywhere. Uh, call it boo, it's turkey boo. I mean, people still call it marabou, but this is what they're talking about. It's actually off of turkey. Um, the marabou stork is uh, endangered in the wild, and although they are raised uh, domestically some places, um, it's wildly expensive, and and um, it's just, you know, we're just switching to turkey because that's we get that here. we got plenty of turkeys that are actually starting to breed turkeys for feathers, and um, it works just as well or better. Okay, so turkey boo. So let's grab a hank of the turkey boo. Let's grab a hank of this nice turkey boo. And I'm looking at this piece right here. I'm going to take this whole side down right here like this. Okay, I'm going to gather it. I'll shake out any loose nasties that are want to come out of there. Okay, and then I'll take and trim. Trim that weird end off. All that quill in there. All that quill... Uh, came rolling out of there and I'm gonna I want my tail about that long it's about oh <coughs> oh excuse me okay I'm gonna bring this in and I want my tail about that long about the same length as the body it's a little longer jig you can tie these shorter and as you can see your head is a little bigger than it would be on a standard eighth ounce jig and this actually is going to weigh closer to 330 seconds so it's even a little lighter than that now you can stop right there with the tail but uh since i already yanked out a couple prime plumes here i'm going to go ahead you know me i like them fat and i like this this to match up and get scale with this big head um i have got to uh make it kind of fat in the tail and uh I'm going to put it in a little hank. Now I got a feather in there that's going the wrong way. And get that out. Get anything loose out of there. And we'll trim off the quill. The, the hard part ain't doing us no good. And once again, I'm just going to match the length right there. Remember, one, two loose. Pull straight down, tight. Wrap it in. You want to say, oh, you should cut that off. No, you don't want to cut that off. You want trap that boo in there nice now what we're gonna do is we're going to lay in our tinsel next so what we're gonna do is on this embroidery thread the tinsel comes off in two strands it comes off in two strands just like that and uh, we're gonna cut both those strands just like that and you know when we just double it so I took off about a six or seven inch piece maybe a little longer and I'm gonna double it down Double it, and I'm just gonna keep folding it. Now I got, now I got a piece about that long. Okay, got a piece about that long there, and I'd rather have it be a little long, a little short. I'm gonna move these fibers that are short. I'm gonna 
even things up a little bit. And then I'm gonna lay that beautiful gold right in there on the side. I'm gonna tie around this excess. And I am, I don't wanna get too much junk wrapped up in there, so I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, and then you just work this around with your fingers. Okay, now I'm gonna tie this blind. Of course, I won't be blind to you, because you're, you're inside the camera, you're looking at the other side of the jig going, I can't see what you're doing. I'll show you. Uh, you all that get the vices that rotate or even go fancier and get the ones that articulate and rotate. Okay, so we're taking off about six inches again here. Okay, double strand, about six inches. Okay, and uh, I'm going to take that off. Take it, go and double it once. It's probably more like eight inches, maybe. Don't matter. Put as much gold in there as you want. I like. I don't know, I'd just call a medium amount. I like it to be there, but I don't want it to be there. I'm not tying a gold jig. I'm not tying a, a gold bug or anything like that, which has a lot of gold in it. I'm just tying what I call a goldie, which is my favorite, one of my favorite little, little. Uh, so now we got this, and don't worry about it curling and stuff, because you start dragging it through the water. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this on this side. And one, two, nice and easy till I get it where I want it. Okay. And wrap her in. And then come in here and take care of that. And now, because I don't have a rotating vise, I'm going to take this and have a look at it. Oh, well, that wasn't a bad, bad. So I got it like that on that side. I got that side. I got that side. They look really well matched. Uh, it looks awful fun and exciting. And, uh, we're going to get her back in there and uh, straighten her up a little bit. This, this device is a little different than my other one. Same D.H. Thompson. Good old D.H. Thompson. Plain old vice. Anyway, we're going to wrap that down. Now, if you remember the trip on uh, chenille, you can either start your chenille down here and just go one direction with it. Uh, once again, because this jig head is big and I'm tying kind of a bigger jig, I'm going to go down and back. Um, but I'm looking over my table here and I don't have my chenille, so you'll have to excuse me a minute while I go over here and grab it. Okay, so I like to wrap off the card so I don't have a lot of waste. So here I am with a fluorescent green, fluorescent green chartreuse chenille. And don't tell me it's flow yellow because I'll show you flow yellow. It's, it's even lighter than this. So I'm going to start in easy. I'm going to get down here a ways. I'm going to hold on to everything. I'm going to pull that a little bit. Tug it. Tug it. Now, I don't care how fat you make your bodies. As long as they either they're even or they get wider as they go to the head. You really don't want a jig that ends up getting um, skinnier toward the head. Um, now, so you want to hold your tail material. I'm going to pull that tight. I don't want all that material to roll around on me. Okay, I want to stay right where it's at. I'm going to tug that tight again. And then I'm going to come back up. You can see this is going to make me a nice fat body. And you don't want to just build, build, build material in between the bead and where it connects. Because you, if you're really, you know, if you're strong and you're really stubborn about it, you can get to where you're, you're going to force that, that whole nail and, and bead assembly out. And you don't want that. So... You got your shine on here, beautiful gold head, nice and shiny, and uh, we're going to finish her up here. I'll cut that off, and we're going to take our Sally Hansen's. Where are you, girl? There she is. Sally Hansen's invisible, and we're going to. Put a little on the string, just like that. We're gonna come up a little tighter on this, and we're gonna wrap all that nice adhesive right down in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna one, two, three, four, and now it's where I tug it down. Okay, and then I want to put. The British style or the underhanded style, but anyway, this half hitch here. Now, as you can see, I'm around the hook eye, and I don't want that. I'm gonna get that off that hook eye. I want it hanging up there. 
pull that down tight. Now rock your thread back and forth. Just seat it down in there with that glue really good and boom, off it goes. All right, there it is. Beautiful strands in there. Uh, give you some nice flash anywhere where you've got minnows going on that have gold to them like gold shiners and uh, sometimes in the summer your fatheads can kind of be a brown gold and, and uh, uh, little bullheads and little little gold crappies little you know black crappies there's all kinds of times when uh, a goldie's a good pattern so there goes the goldie alrighty thanks everybody for tuning in this is crappie hippie saying tight lines and valentines peace out Here comes Goldie. Ain't she pretty? Oh yeah. She just swimming along. Says, hey, I am paying attention. I'm just kinda eating plankton and kinda enjoying life. And the next thing you know, kind of beer bass just Slurp. Go.